Hello everyone, welcome to day 20 of our AWS master class and this is going to be a session before the final session. So we have one final session which is day 21 and uh, this is going to be a pre one which is day 20 and uh, here we are going to see once again new service which is really interesting because we are going to connect that with what all we have learned previously and then we will try to make it work. For example, in just base words, the topic which we are going to see is AWS Amplify in this session. And talking about this AWS Amplify, it's an app which can be used particularly for full stack developments. So talking about these full stack developments and all, for example, we have already tried to create, uh, we have done, right? For example, if I get a value of X and value of Y uh, from my event in Lambda from an API call, it will generate and give you the result. And then some way if I integrate it in my front end, so I could create a serverless web app which performs that task. So likewise, we are going to create something similar in this session. So we'll be doing that in this session with the help of AWS Amplify. And apart from what we see here in AWS Amplify, it provides you for a lot of options for you to explore more. You could also use it for creating UI for front end design and all like Figma. And there are a lot of supports also provided. You could also post your code here with the help of any GitHub or any other source uh, code versioning control place. Any repositories can be joined here. So this AWS Amplify will help you to host that. So that's what we'll be trying to do in this session. So we'll start with that. So in day 20, we'll cover AWS Amplify. So talking about this AWS Amplify, a proper introduction about this, it is a set of purpose build tools and features that enables front-end web and mobile developers to quickly and easily build full stack applications on AWS. And uh, they provide two servers, one is hosting, another one is studio. Hosting provides Git based workflow for hosting full stack serverless web apps and with continuous deployment as available. And studio is a place where you can design and implement your front ends and all. Uh, both backends can also be done here. So if you have your code in some kind of repositories or from your local system, you could host it with Amplify and you could also use Amplify to make or create some things. And uh, we will be mostly seeing about Amplify hosting in this session. And talking about this, this is also available for mobile app developments like Android Studio and all. If you have idea about Android Studio and Java for mobile app development using Android Studio, you could integrate AWS Amplify there and it will help you to build some nice applications for mobile. And you could also use it for front end for web apps and so on. So talking about uh, this uh, Amplify, it accelerates your app backend development using tools and services. So you could easily create a backend. Okay, so a lot of options for you like GraphQL and REST APIs are available. So you could connect to your app. You can use Amplify libraries or Amplify Studio itself to connect to your app and to new and existing AWS backends. For example, what will you do if you want to have an application which is database from AWS, you could use DynamoDB or RDS. Or for example, if you want to have authentication systems and all, you could go with Cognito. And like that, for example, if you need serverless APIs, you could, uh, for example, if you need serverless uh, an application, you could use Lambda. If you want to call APIs, you could use API Gateway, right? So like that, from different parts of AWS services can be integrated here easily. And it will help you to run collaboratively and run your application. So it manages the users and con content with the help of outside services. And also it extends a use case. So you can use command line interface. Mostly people use when they want to deploy their application. Most people used to combine with ReactJS and all and combine with AWS Amplify and run it. So what we will be de doing in this particular session is something like this. We need to build a serverless web application with the help of Lambda, API Gateway, Amplify and DynamoDB. We know guys, this part we already know it. Okay. So if I have some, what previously what we have done is from the API Gateway, if any API post method, if it's in some information, like something like ID, description, the name, what I have done is I have stored it in DynamoDB. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it as my database to just store the events. Apart from that, what will happen is now in some way, if the user from the front end enters the value of X and Y, 
and if they want to calculate either addition or subtraction or multiplication or division so i'll be giving them options so the user select something so that will give you aws lambda a call from this api through the post method it will be re redirected here where the backs will be done and the result will be updated back through the api and this will be displayed in the front end and whatever happens with this should be like it's a copy of a data of what happened the history or log of it so i'm going to store what is the x value entered what is the y value entered and what is the operation they have done what time it is done what's the answer so everything i'm going to just store it in dynamo db and in amplify for example if you have your html code you can integrate with amplify and uh, from there only in that for example in my code in my front end i can just uh, use amplify to design or i can enter my code also here so I, i'll be passing my code file here which is going to be a html file with the contents of html css and script also javascript and with that what this is going to do is that will have a api call with our api gateway domain name so in that api call like from that url a call will be sent so whatever user enters in the front end will be sent here through that api gateway it will pass through lambda and the answer will be generated before giving it here it will just store a copy of what all things happened from here in the dynamo db for the creator's reference and that answer now will be sent back to the amplify front end to display like it will be display like a alert of the answer it will be displayed so this is what a simple serverless web application which you are going to build and why am i doing this is this is just a prototype or demo of how you could use multiple things for example this is a base version hopefully in the next session if possible we'll add we'll create a, some more advanced web app with the all these things and also we could also for example if i integrate cognito in between here so i could ask the user to create account and whoever has the account can perform this particular calculations so cognito will help you to do that that is the next step so like that if you want you could create a web application with the help of your aws services right so that's what we'll be doing so let's start with hands on going hands on so before jumping into aws amplify as i told you right the base idea here uh before amplify we are just going to uh, host our application so we'll see that at the end uh, hands on about it before that we need to have a lambda function where it performs the code and then uh, proceeds you with the output that we can do and also before that we need to design our front end so that based on what we design that we can add our lambda function and integrate with the dynamo db table and then we can create a api gateway and that api link will be integrated in our html code in the front end and finally after doing all these things i'll be deploying it or hosting it in my aws amplify which will provide the application smoothly okay so whenever it running it you could use the url and check and make it work so finally what we are going to do is first let me start with uh, the coding part of html uh the front end which performs the task so that we can move smoothly to the next part so i'm going to use vs code for this particular task and i'll create a file in the name index.html okay so we'll start with this uh, basic example we'll create for example i need to type okay mostly i'll be going hands on in this doc type is html i'll call the html part okay so inside of it i'll go with the head element okay so i'll enter the meta character set is utf8 and uh, we could add title if you guys know about html most people know about it i'll give something like math operations or calculators it's up to you and uh, yeah we could also have our styling part here but i'm not going to do it now i'll just leave it empty for now okay so we'll be doing that later uh, css style in style part we'll be providing the css part which is not required right now so first we'll design it and then we'll add some style basic styles and all is required for our app anyway also i'll be providing the script here which is the important part here we need to type js here so that will help us to send the post method okay res request and response so from that only we'll be getting and doing these things with the help of uh, our
amplify so continuing with that i'll be providing the script later first before that we'll just go into the body of the content of this html so i'll create the body where i'll have a heading for example we'll give it as math operations okay and uh, for example i'm going to create a form and if you guys know html the task here is i want to create form once the submit button is pressed it should provide me the answer so when the submit button is pressed i'll be calling the script i have entered lately okay and uh, before that i need some form and buttons so first i'll create a label <coughs> so label will be number one okay so uh, i need them to uh, enter a uh, x value or first number which they want to calculate with so i'll go with input box here and uh, in the input what they need to do is the type of it is uh, we can give it as uh, text box and uh, the name is important here or id i'll go with uh, num1 okay and uh, after that i'll create another label which is number 2 now i am giving only these options two numbers you could enter and calculate okay and uh, this type is also going to be our text and the id is going to be num2 and uh, yeah so once i have this uh, what i need to do is i'll have a line break and then the next line i need to provide a, a label which is going to be called as uh, operations which is where i am going to provide some radio buttons for them to select which operation they need to perform either addition or subtraction or multiplication or division so i'll go with uh, some input options for example the input type is going to be radio button okay and the name is going to be operation okay it should be unique and uh, something like this operation and the value value is important because i'll be taking it from our if you know from our next part which is going to be our uh, lambda right so i'll be taking it there so i'll enter addition and uh, the input this is for subtraction and the type is going to be here it is radio button and the name is going to be once again operation and the value so it should be unique and uh, same this name and also that they are radio buttons of same things which can be selected and then we could give up outputs so i'll go with this is for multiplication this is for your reference and the type once again is radio button and the uh, name is going to be operation and the value is going to be multiplication so remember this value this is what i'll be referring in our uh, lambda part and get these values this is a radio button and the name is belong to operation and the value is going to be now division and this is for division okay so once i have all these things i need to have a final which is going to be a button so this button will help me to submit these things okay so here i need to have a type which is button and also on click okay <coughs> when i need to click it when i click it i need to perform some operation so which i'll be doing later when you done with the script we can do that okay and uh, we need to add another script also for performing this particular operation which operation you require we need to do it in js so i think we can start with that first uh, starting with uh, yeah i'll go and create a script here so i'll go with a function which will called as get selected operation yeah so i'll be typing operation we can give some name like radios will be equal to document dot get elements by name so you have given some name right so you could get from that name is operations right operation so so for this in i equal to 0 
starting from that and i less than operation radius dot length of it and every time it runs i'll be appending it with one or adding it with one so what will happen here i'll freshly start with if a conditional statement operation radius of that particular index dot checked if it is clicked okay so only when this conditional statement is successful it will return that the particular value of that index which is going to be either addition or subtraction or multiplication or division so we'll be getting that and also i need to have a special case if the user haven't selected anything uh, i'll just uh, return for example here itself i if nothing is there i'll just return add so either the condition satisfies or it comes out from here so that's the basic idea yeah so i think we can continue with the next one okay it seems like some error please wait yeah the error is actually here it's me colon fine now it's sorted out so this script is fine so we'll also need to add our main script which is going to be here so that handles our post method and all it's a quite huge task we'll start writing it in this script and once we done it we can go into lambda and then we could go very fastly and continue with the next one so here we'll create a function called call api okay so i'll be writing it here and then integrating it later on with on click in that button so i'll be getting the operation which is going to be performed on number one and number two so this should be centered inside right so yeah we'll start with that and my headers will be equal to you know headers my headers we can add things inside sorry for that we need to pass this information that's the idea we want we once we have it we need to pass it through the api call so i'll append uh, the details for example the content type comma the application bar json and uh, we could create a request body so this is where we will be integrating our values which is x value y value and all so i'll start with our x value so the format of x is going to be pass float value it could be so i'll be passing number one here comma we will need to pass our y value which is going to be once again pass float value of number two so once these things are obtained it will be done and also i need to pass the operation which is going to be my operation variable which i'll be getting from here from the parameters i'll be getting this and i am creating this record body and the headers so once i have done this i need to create a json string from the request body so once this is done i'll call the next one to continue so the next thing is going to be raw equal to json option dot string uh, yeah stringify and i could pass my request body inside this will turn it into that format request body will be now used here and yeah so finally once you have it we are going to create the request option so that's where we will be mentioning for example the request uh, options is going to be my which type of things which i need to perform here so it is going to be something like what is the method so this is where we'll mention what's the method and you guys know we need to send it in post method so i'll be passing post comma and the headers for this is going to be my headers okay so i which i have created new headers and uh, we'll be appending the content type along with the application bar json and the body is going to be body of this uh, request is going to be my uh, raw which i have created using the stringify option json and finally redirect option i'll go with follow okay so once i have all these things it's ready so now the format for everything is ready but you need to make a api call and handle that response which means when you uh, make a call uh, the api will be 
like it will be sended and it will perform the task and give you the result right that's the idea of api and that response should be handled right so that's a making like that's called as a calling the api and handle that response to call it now we you could see that we have all formatized it in a way but we need to make it in a way that so it calls the api and responds it so are we are going to integrate the api we are going to use something known as the fetch okay so you could have the request info url along with the things inside of it so here i leave this empty because this is where i'll be pasting my api gateway link so in that the uh, api call can happen and uh, what it should do is this is the request options will be passed inside of it okay so i'll go with dot then so i need to handle the response so the response okay so the response will be response dot text it will be available so i need to get that text here okay so along with that then i'll go with uh, result so the result i'm just going to create a alert so i'll show you what is alert when it practically works uh, it will be showing like alert box in the browser itself so i'll get jso and dot parse the result which i got okay so dot body in dot body i'll do this and also finally if any error happens i'll go with catch method of error so any error occurred i think i can display this uh, in the console dot log with error comma i'll pass the error here and yeah so it seems like we have done the part and uh, i think we are missing something one minute yeah actually here we shouldn't close this so i'll just cut it off and uh, i'll just take it we should be pasting it here after the end it should be uh, available to mark the end of this function so we have created this function anyway which is call api and it does ca does all the task but where are you going to integrate it so if you remember we are going to integrate it in one particular place and uh, that place is going to be nothing but our click button so on click what should happen okay so when it is click i'll be call the api call api where i need to pass if you know operation and number 1 and number 2 so to get that i'll go with get uh, if you guys remember we have created another one which is called as get selected operation so this will help us to find what is it if nothing there it will pass add option so in empty case and also i need to get my things for example document dot i could use uh, get element by id and that id is going to be num1 so that we will be getting number 1 and uh, yeah also i need to also get document dot get element by id which is going to be number 2 okay so yeah also i need to add one thing here dot value and uh, here also it's dot value okay so the values will be obtained and uh, the calculate uh, for example here we could add something like calculate a name for this button instead of button or submit we could add calculate and uh, if everything is done properly okay so we'll verify it once again and we still hadn't had our uh, css part we'll do that anyway if this is ready so i could go and uh, open this uh, with or i'll just find it in the location of it it is here in this particular folder i'll open it and we'll try to see what it is there yeah so this is what we have created so if i add any number here and number here and if i go with any of these operations in the radio button and if i click calculate once i integrate it it will call the api and it will give for example lambda will give us response it will be displayed here okay so that's the idea behind this and before proceeding further this looks very bad i just want to add some little bit css part please be patient till we complete it so in the style i have left it empty right so where i'll call i have a h1 tag so for h1 tags i'll go with a color of uh, it's up to you i'll go with color i think we have so i have written some of the color features here so i'll be using that particular colors or it's up to you if you want you could select some other colors too which you like okay so i'll go with this particular color for h1 tag which will tell us 
uh, what do you want to do it's like calculation perform that right so font i'll select arial and the margin left i'll add something like 20 px will be fine and this is for h1 tag and if you remember we have a body in the background so the body color i'll go with the background color and uh, we could add something like uh, yeah we'll try this color and then later on check you could also view this changes here so this is how the background changes okay the color which we have set it and uh, after that i'll yeah i think we can also try with some dark colors you could also integrate live server it's a feature from there uh, okay it looks bad we'll go with the previous one itself yeah so after this i'll go and add uh, for labels and all we could have a font family of font family yeah we'll go with arial and uh, font size since it's a label i'll go with the size of 20 px and margin left will be 20 px and also at the above of it we have the h1 tag so i'll go with the margin top which is also going to be a 20 px to make it nice with some differentiation in the like gap between them and we could also add a color for example i think we can go with yeah let us see how it is yeah it looks good font looks good we'll add something for the button now so it's only few left button and input box we are done we can go with the next one so for the button we have a button and uh, we could add a background color and all anyway so we'll go with uh, font family arial and uh, font size which is going to be once again here 20 px and our font weight we could add uh, bold and margin left would be 30 px margin top 20 px and the width we'll add a width here for this which is going to be like something like 100 px and let's check the button calculate okay it seems bad <coughs> i think we can adjust uh, the size yeah it looks good we should add some colors to make it nice a background color for this and uh, border color and color for the text inside calculate i'll go with black let us see how it looks green and black combo yeah it's fine so you could use this button to calculate and finally you have these radio buttons or so no issues with that it's just the input boxes if you want you could add it i'll just add uh, for input boxes i need to add the font family only arial and uh, yeah font size also we'll keep it at 20 px basic things we'll do margin top with 20 px and margin left since it's uh, inside the box we'll go with 10 px and uh, you could also add the width we'll go with 100 px yeah so that's it about the html parts it should look something like this so it looks neat if you enter these numbers and select any of these buttons and click calculate the result should apply this is the front end and we also need to know one thing guys we have everything is in place but we need to add one part which is going to be uh, our uh, api where i have left this fetch empty so this is where we'll paste our uh, api gateway link so since it is ready i can just go into my console okay seems like i have closed it one minute
I'll shift to Mumbai region and uh, first we'll go into lambda to do the next task so then that's why we can then we can combine it to the front end and all okay so yeah it seems like any old things yeah i'll create a function for example we'll go with uh, demo python 3.11 create this function and also we'll check amplify is available in this region mumbai yeah it's available so no issue so once this function is ready i need to do it in a way that if any uh, request comes from the api i want to do the task and store it in dynamo db table so we need to also have our dynamo db ready so it's simple we'll create a table here a database table so that it can store the information so calculator we can have this name any partition key and all is fine i think go with id yeah i'll create this table so the table has been created in the name of calculator so we can go into lambda and we know we could use some libraries to uh, use uh, dynamo db and we need to perform the event calculation and all remember so we'll go and import boto3 and uh, we also i also need to store what time it is when the operation happened so i'll import date time where i can get the date and time and i'll be writing it off in my dynamo db so yeah before going to that we can initialize my dynamo db you could call boto3 dot client this is a way uh, we could also do it in some other ways we'll go and call dynamo db and uh, later on i'll be passing the information for that particular table so yeah before starting this i first want to try a event which is going to be x equal to i'll be getting some number one from my event right so i'll get that and uh, y equal to uh, event i'll get y so once i have it i'll go and perform operation so the operation is equal to event and if you remember y x and y you can go into the vs code and uh, check in which format you have given x y and the operation this is how the api will look like so we could get that here so the event will have the operation so i'll be getting all these three things and uh, now it's time for you to perform simple python code if operation is equal to add okay if it is addition i'll present the answer as x plus y and uh, lf the operation is equal is equal to subtraction i'll go with the answer equal to x minus y and lf the operation is equal to multiplication i'll proceed with answer equal to x multiplied by y and lf the operation is equal to division i'll go with the answer which is going to be x divided by y so once i have these answers i will also get the current time of when this event happened so a variable current time will be equal to you could call your date time dot now and you could also use the format iso format to view it in the correct format in the iso format you could check that and once i have these things now i have x value y value operation answer which i need to redirect i'll do that anyway and also the current time i'll just use this place to pass my response in my table the response will be equal to dynamo db dot put underscore item so i'm directly calling it from here where i can mention the table name is going to be calculator okay and uh, comma the item is going to be we need to pass our x value which is going to be i'll create a yeah it's a string of x value yeah comma and i'll pass y value which is going to be once again string of y value so this is how you could write the json format of it too and the operation things you want to enter you could add it in the json format and write it like this and this is a string data type these n and s are 
data types of it which you are mentioning and uh, and don't get confused n is for numbers and uh, s is for string operation is a string and uh, time stamp i can create a column which is time stamp which could be a string and uh, i can pass details which is going to be current time right comma we could also have answer which is once again this is a number so i'll go with n and uh, the type is string i'll pass the answer yeah this is fine so we'll check it once again if any issues happen don't work yeah it seems good to me so we can continue with the next one so once i now it will be stored in this particular table in dynamo db you need to give permission and you could return this code if it it is try method so if it's successful okay i can just pass this as a dump where this is what the response is going to be so i'll give a formatted output so this what you type here will be put in the alert message in the output that's how the uh, that's how we have written the script code so i'll go and give something like uh, you are answer is and i'll pass the answer variable which will be the number will be passed here and in the accept okay if anything goes down if anything not works well i'll pass just a accept statement and which returns a status code i could just copy this of 500 and the body we could tell that something went wrong okay or error occurred something like that so i'll just uh, remove entire things and uh, pass error occurred okay so yeah so it seems good we'll deploy this and also this works with dynamo db so i'll just add its permission to use dynamo db so that it can be integrated and used i'll add permissions attach policies and we'll go with uh, dynamo db full access add permissions yeah so in the code i'll just go and yeah everything looks good and uh, yeah so we could go inside and see what is the uh, table we have here explore table items we don't have anything can we try with uh, one sample sorry for that i'll open lambda once again can we try with the uh, invoke event and check whether it's working or not with a test event i'll go with test and uh, configure for example we need to pass uh, the <coughs> x value which is going to be 3 y value i'll go with uh, 20 comma operation i'll just add uh, to check it i'll go with add and uh, yeah we'll just uh, trial and we could save it and invoke it and we'll send it for testing event and get the execution results okay error occurred so what type of error it is we'll see that if anything is not clear in this code it will lead us to error okay i think it's better to go with accept uh, exception as e and uh, you could also pass that error occurred and uh, formatted of e what happened there so that we can easily debug it deploy and we'll test it once again and get what issue we had okay when calling put item one or where involved missing id okay we are missing the key id so the reason we are getting this particular error because uh, in the table we have asked for the partition key which is unique id and we haven't passed it here that's the error and uh, i think to sort this down we could go with something like i'll import a uh, uid which will provide us or help us to get a unique id every time it runs and uh, we could get it in uh, unique underscore id which is going to be equal to a string of you could call this uid dot uid4 so it will generate a hexadecimal code i think so which we can also pass it in the id so if you remember here we could pass the id which is going to be our string it is 
uh, and its value is going to be our unique ID value. I'll just close this, separate it with comma, and uh, I hope it's fine. We could uh, this UID will give you universally unique identifier, and uh, yeah, it will be a hexadecimal string. I think it's separated with hyphens and all. We'll deploy this first and check it once again. So if everything falls into place, we could get the result. And we are getting our answer, which is 320. And what is the task I have done? I forgot the numbers. Okay, there's a reason we are getting here. What it happened is 3 plus 20, it has given 320 because it has performed or obtained it as a string here. So we need to do something for that. We could also use integer here, convert it into integers. See here guys, simple mistake, the output changes, right? So we could turn it into integers here so that mathematical operation can be done. We'll test it once again. Yeah, the answer is 23. It's working fine, which means here we'll refresh it two times. See here, this is the ID, which will be a unique hex uh, 32 character separated with hyphens. I think so hexadecimal string. Okay, so it's a partition key every time you can generate this and uh, we could have something like these things which is the answer, what operation happened and what's the timestamp exactly when it happened and all. So before proceeding further, it works fine. So we can go and call our next guy who is going to be our API gateway. So if you can do it here, we should create a API and then integrate in our code and then integrate in Amplify so that it works properly. So we could go into the REST API and build it. Okay, so it seems like it is a new design. So we'll go into the old designs if possible. Okay, so I'll give some name, for example, once again, this is demo. We'll create this API. Okay, use the old console that was way better. Yeah, we have our demo here. So for example, we know we can create a method and since we are using post method, we'll go with post, select it and enable everything. So it works on the Lambda. Okay, it seems like I'm in North Virginia here. This is Mumbai. Fine, so I should, it seems like I should be removing these things and uh, doing it once again in the, one minute guys, I'll just delete these things and come back with uh, Mumbai region. So it shouldn't be causing any issues. It will cause anyway, if you are from different regions and trying to integrate things, you will get errors. So I'll just go with this and uh, create a API. Build. Demo API. It's optimized, create this API. And in the actions, I'll create a method which is going to be post method. And Lambda function AP South one, I could get my demo here. This is why uh, what the problem is and we could solve it now and we can go with save. Okay. And uh, yeah, so we could test it. If you want, you could enter details. It will give you the request body. So if you want, I could do that too. Uh, what's the test event we had here? I'll just copy this and uh, do it here. We'll perform now multiplication between these two numbers and uh, try to send it. The answer is 60. It works good. So it should be also updated in the table for the third time. Yeah, uh, the, everything is available here. So I could in the actions, I'll enable the course and I could deploy this. We'll make it deploy and then use it in our code. Okay, so we'll deploy this API and the stage is new stage. I'll go with production stage and deploy this. We have already done this. So this is our invoke URL. So this is what you have to take. This is important. So we have already uh, utilized it with the Postman app. Now what if, if you want to make it from your application, you could use the scripts I have used in the HTML part. And uh, here what I have to enter is this particular fetch. I need to paste this particular link where it could be done, all the operations. Now I'll save it. And what you have to do is you have to find it in your folder. So make sure you have it. This is how it looks. Okay, so this is how it looks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take this into zip file. So you could add to archive and turn it into a zip file, which has this index 
So this is how you could add it in the Amplify. So I'll go into the Amplify. We haven't seen that also, right? So talking about Amplify, it helps you to build web applications and mobile apps, full stack. Uh, it has uh, hosting options and studio options. So fastest way to develop mobile and web apps with uh, React JS, mostly JS applications, Android and uh, Flutter you could do. And uh, you could either use Studio to build an app, you could also host it. I'll go with hosting an app here. You could take it from GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, code commit like we have seen in previous session about uh, version control and all. Or you could deploy without a Git provider. I'll continue. And I can give a name uh, once again, demo calculator. Okay. And uh, we could add it from URL or S3 you could drag and drop to. So I'll choose a file which is uh, from Amplify. And this is the index file, I'll save it. And we'll save and deploy this. So which will be deploying our application. Now it has the URL which is running. So if everything is in place, we could use this domain name to get output, which is fully functional. So this is a hosting environment front end with uh, what we have with the rest uh, of the codes. So yeah, in the domain name, I have these things. For example, I'll enter a number five and I'll go with seven and I'll perform uh, like uh, multiplication now and calculate. So you could see right? this is the answer we got, it's successful and it is coming from the alert, that's what we have given. So the response from the API is displayed in the alert, it has done in the fetch, everything is happening. You could try with different numbers too and uh, check the subtraction, I'll calculate this, your answer is 8 and uh, what are things has been done is now stored here as uh, information, okay, so you could also get your timestamp of it. Okay, so in today's date, what time it has been performed and all things can be obtained like this and it will be running till you have your application. So like that, if you also integrate Cognito and you have like login page and all, it will work. So that's how it utilizes a lot of uh, AWS services and bring you the output. So if you don't want it to run in the actions, we can delete this app since we have completed this. I'll wind up these things which I have delete created. And in the API gateway, I'll remove this uh, stage and delete it. Delete this API, which is uh, demo API. Yeah, this is done. Now it won't work. Domain name won't be available on the table. If you want that table, you could keep it or remove that too. So it's a good practice. After practicing, wind up everything which you have created and also our lambda function. I'll take a copy of it and then delete it. Yeah, so that's it. We'll see in the next session. We have done our task successfully of building a serverless web application and it does the task. So we'll see in the final session. Thank you.